This is so wild. Well, it's just kind of like making meringue. I mean, it's very simple. I know, but to call it bread is weird. <laughs> <laughs> but what you're telling me... It's because of what it turns into. Yeah. Because once you cool this, as soon as you cool it, like that, once they get cooled, then you put them in plastic in an airtight container. I just use a Ziploc bag. Or Hi. <laughs> you better talk. <laughs> My sister, she is going to make? I'm gonna make a batch of cloud bread. And I'm gonna start, it has two parts. One is just doing the egg whites. And um, I used to do this real fancy, but somebody taught me to do it really crazy and it works. So. You do it in your hand, I've I seen do it that in before. My hand. I hope that I don't break it. And I need one more bowl. Because you are going to make sure that you don't break one into another bowl. Cause, yeah, because my last batch I had two broken yolks. <laughs> Alrighty. Anyhow, you're going to separate your eggs. And this recipe calls for three egg whites and three egg yolks. And they're good. Boy, you really get into your eggs there. <laughs> <laughs> And these are straight from my son's chickens. Yes. It's good. Okay. So for this, for the egg whites, I actually mix a fourth of a teaspoon of baking powder and, and that's it in that. And then I'm going to put the rest in the other bowl. Baking powder. Baking powder, and I use the aluminum. Free. Aluminum free. Okay. I've never seen one that big. <laughs> Sam's Club. Uh, <clears throat> can't do that. Let me remind you, this is the mother of twelve. <laughs> Everything is big, <laughs> especially the children. <laughs> uh, okay, so a fourth a teaspoon of the baking powder, and yes. I'm going to turn it on. Oh, it's yeah, make a that's noise. fine. Okay. Okay, so. No, you can keep going. It, you can, okay. You can keep going. So then I'm going to mix, take my egg yolks, and I'm going to scramble them up. And we're going to put. This is two ounces, so I take an eight ounce thing and just cut it in four, so it makes four batches of flour bread. Of? Oh. Of cream cheese. And this is just regular cream cheese, not the fat free, not the other stuff. It's just regular real cream, cream cheese. cheese. And it should be at room temperature, so it mixes better. This is going to take a little bit. So I'm going to mix and mix and mix. And to this bowl, I'm also going to add a half a teaspoon of salt. Maybe not quite a half. I think I'll do a fourth a teaspoon of salt. And because I'm making them like instead of rolls, I'm gonna put a tiny bit of vanilla. Oh. Tiny bit. And, uh, try and, make and are you adding any coconut sugar to this? I probably will. So I'll just okay. make it. place of like hamburger buns or something, I don't. But since we want it to be just a hint of like a dinner roll, I'm going to add just literally a fourth of a teaspoon. A fourth of a teaspoon. Okay. So a fourth of a teaspoon of that probably is about a fourth of a teaspoon of vanilla too. A fourth of a teaspoon of baking. <laughs> I put a fourth of a teaspoon of everything. And I'm going to keep doing this until it's all emulsified and, and doing good. And then simply we're just going to fold this into the whipped eggs once they're really stiff and holding their peak. And that is all the ingredients we put in here. And so when I make it just for, like if I was going to make hamburgers and I wanted it as a bun or a pizza, I would not put the sugar and I wouldn't put the vanilla. I usually just put the salt, baking powder, and the eggs and cream cheese. Now you have some in the oven now. Are they okay? Which I need to take off. <laughs> 
These are still kind of oh, light. Oh, that's pretty. They've been baking at 300. This, I'm trying 300 instead of 350. It's taking a little bit longer, but they're very, very close. I can't wait to try these. They're kind of a duck, whatever flavor you want it to. You know? That's why sometimes people put sugar, but most of the time I don't. So you could make these um, like with a chili in them. Or so they could be like a Mexican type yes. flavor. Like when I did it for pizza crust, I put the Italian herbs and you know different things like that that you season pizza with. I put it right in this, so it tastes like wow. That and then I just put the cheese and meats over it. Van, can I get you to take these guys off to cool? Because I need to put these on. So you just kind of lift them off and put them on there. So I'm just going to fold these into the whites and I'm going to try really hard not to kind of break all the air bubbles in the whites. You want them to stay fluffy and full of air. So I'm just going to fold it gently. Very gently fold it like any thing just to try and get it to mix, get the whites and it, the yellow all together. And my whites could have maybe been just a little bit stiffer, but it'll work. Then I'm just going to come over here and hold that thought. This is too crumbly and dirty. Voila. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and just make blobs. <laughs> and you can make small ones or large ones. I normally cook six, but you could easily do eight from this batch. This is so wild. Well, it's just kind of like making meringue. I mean, it's very simple. I know, but to call it bread is weird. <laughs> <laughs> but what you're telling me... It's because of what it turns into. Yeah. Because once you cool this, as soon as you cool it, like that, once they get cooled, then you put them in plastic in an airtight container. I just use a Ziploc bag or something. And then you save them. Like if you were doing it the same day, you could use them five hours later. You could use them earlier than that. but. The longer they sit, like overnight, then they'll have a chewier texture, and that's why it's more like a bread. And so you could put, I know you're not as a diabetic, but you could put jam on it, you could put peanut butter on it. Yeah, you could make... And you use them for hamburger buns, yeah, too. Yeah, say, when, when we discovered this summer when we were working, it had, had bread for ever. <laughs> and we were so thrilled because this finally gave us that, you know, part that we were So where did you diet. come up with this recipe? Um... I think I just heard about it on the internet and said, oh, I want to find out what that's like and studied recipes. There's a lot of little versions. Some of them call for a lot of sugar and sweetener and I just don't see a reason for more than a little bit. I am going to take the cloud bread that we cooked and put it in the toaster. Would you like a piece, Jim? Please. <laughs> and put it down and then we're going to put honey butter on it, which we made for Thanksgiving out of our carry butter and our honey. So, and I've tasted this. It's, it's quite amazing. It's kind of got the texture of a crepe, but it's a little bit thicker. And so it really does give the um, impression that you're eating bread when you can't have bread. So it's a wonderful idea. This recipe I will put on the Facebook um, very soon, starting next week. All of the recipes, I'll just say the recipes are on the website, and our website will be up and going. Is it on? And it has a really delicious smell to it. Very delicate very light. Um, so they'd use these for hamburger buns to make sandwiches on. 
all different kinds tacos. of things. Tacos? Mm -hmm. There you go. See what you think. Thank you. I'm like floating on the clouds. That's really good. It is really good. I'm so shocked. I never heard of anything like this before. So you have to try it if you can't have bread. It's like eating a little grape. 